Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Paresis. I just finished off a day's work. I work in London, UK in partnership with Dr. Feller and Dr. Bloxham in Great Neck, New York. What I'd like to do today is discuss a patient's case, and I'd like to use that case to discuss a topic that's very important to me. As I'm sure you've seen from the thumbnail, I want to discuss the case of this patient. Um, he's a young man who came to us uh, wanting um, restoration of those frontotemporal corners. You can see he has some thinning and recession in those corners and it's, it's sort of creeping backwards. He came to us quite distressed about this. He had very, very good hair um, elsewhere on the scalp. As you can see, it was good density. He hadn't lost much in that frontal um, forelock and, and he hadn't lost any in the crown either. Um, we thought he was a very good candidate for surgery. Uh, we quoted him just under 2,000 grafts and we also felt that his skin type, as you can see, that olive skin type, um, would reduce the contrast between the skin and the hair and so make him an even better candidate for surgery. But when he came to us, he was quite distressed about his hair loss. Um, it said that it had been affecting him. It had said that it had been bothering him. And this is something that we see a lot with, um, with patients who come uh, for hair transplant surgery. It's important to talk about the mental health aspects associated with hair loss. As someone who's experienced hair loss myself, I know how upsetting it can be. Um, it's something that no one prepares you for. No one tells you that you're gonna lose your hair in school or when you're younger. And then you wake up one day and you know, you've lost 50% of your hair, which is the amount that it takes to lose before you actually notice it. You know, if you lose 50% of your hair, that's when you start to see it. And, um, you know, you, you, get, you might get comments from friends or peers or family members telling you, oh, you know, you've lost your hair. And that can be very upsetting for a lot of patients. You know, I, I totally get it. I mean, looking at the statistics, ab around about 50% of men by the age of 50 have lost a significant amount of hair. 16% um, of men will progress to that sort of Norwood 7 um, stage of, of hair loss. And just like this patient here who's, who's quite upset about the amount of hair that he's lost. I thought that it would be a good idea to look at one of the papers that has examined the psychology of hair loss in more detail. So I thought this was an excellent paper by Dr. Cash that was worthwhile discussing. You can see here the highlighted sections that I want you to pay attention to. First of all, of course, hair can be an essential part of self-identity or body image. And um, this little section here talks about how hair is, is, is rather unique in that it's one of the few parts of your body that you can customize and style relatively quickly. I mean, generally, if you wanted to change your appearance, um, if let's say you wanted to lose weight, that takes a long time. If you wanted to gain muscle, it takes a long time. With hair, you can cut it, you can style it, you can grow it out, you can color it. You can it really is an important source of self-expression for many, many people. This part is just a reminder of just how common male pattern baldness is. The paper uses the abbreviation AGA, which just stands for androgenic alopecia, which is the same as male pattern baldness. And this section here is just a reminder of just how common it is. I mean, it really is, you know, 38% of men in their 30s, 40% in their 40s, 50% in their 50s, and it just keeps going up and up and up. And the older you are, the more likely you're going to experience male pattern baldness. I want you to pay attention to this section here. The author, Dr. Cash, he surveyed about 145 American men with and without male pattern baldness. And he wanted to ask them about the impact that hair loss had on their daily lives. Two thirds of men wish they had more hair. Okay, sixty percent reported greater social self-consciousness. Sixty-two percent said that their peers teased them about their hair loss. Forty-seven percent said that they look older than their age and worried about people noticing their baldness. And forty-one percent said that they felt less attractive. And forty percent felt feelings of frustration and helplessness about their hair loss. And you can see that um, you know uh, the more hair loss that a patient experienced, greater feelings of uh, of, of distress that they experience. We also have another study here in the US of about 273 men, and this basically uh, concluded that men with more severe male pattern baldness were more worried about it. They were more worried about aging, social noticeability of losing their hair, and more dissatisfied with their appearance as well. You can also see that there was a survey done in Europe which confirmed, again, pretty much the same things, feelings of inadequacy, of distress, of psychosocial adversity. And this is in lots of different countries, France, Germany, Italy, and the UK. So you can see that the stress caused by hair loss is really not confined to one country or one culture or one society. You know, men across the world from different countries, different continents 
are all similarly affected by this phenomenon. The second and final paper that I'd like to discuss is a paper that um, used a, a questionnaire to look at feelings of loneliness, anxiety, and depression in male patients who underwent ha hair transplant surgery. Once again, I've highlighted the areas that I really want you to focus on. So the aim of the paper was to determine whether hair transplant surgery improves those feelings of loneliness, anxiety, and depression. This particular hair transplant surgeon um, asked 35 patients from their clinic to um, answer a questionnaire about um, that specific topic. You can see here the average age of those 35 patients was 25 years old, which just reminds us about how young patients can be affected by hair loss and how um, uncomfortable it can be um, dealing with the idea that you know you might look older than your age. That's a difficult reality for a lot of men to accept. Here we can see in the discussion that when looking at the results, comparing how the patients felt before hair transplant surgery compared to after, they experienced fewer feelings of loneliness, anxiety, and despair than before. And just a reminder here in the conclusion that you know this does imply that hair transplant surgery can help those men that are you know most distressed, that are most uncomfortable, that are most uh, upset about their hair loss. It can help them socially and psychologically in many, many ways. So let's revisit our patient. Now, um, as you can see, he had an excellent result. Um, we put about 1,500 grafts into this patient, about 750 on either side. You can see that is, it is a tremendous result. Um, you know, the, 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 the transplanted hair here fits beautifully with the native hair. We went quite dense, but not too dense because he's a young patient. We didn't want to take too many grafts and put him in a bad situation down the line. It means that he has lots to pick from in the future should his hair loss progress. You can see that he hasn't lost any more hair since, um, which is good. He was on preventative medication, which slows down hair loss. But most importantly, what I wanted to focus on is how this patient felt after his hair transplant surgery. You know, He came to us and he told us he felt much better in his own skin. He felt much more comfortable walking around, felt more confident, and um, there was undeniable improvements on his mental health. Another shot which just showcases the result. And another one from above. It's important when looking at results to look at lots of different angles because, of course, you know, you're not only going to be seen from the front, you're not only going to be seen from the side. It's important that your hair transplant surgery looks natural and, and, and of good density, you know, from all angles. Here we can see another angle, and, you know, we did the same thing on the patient's right side as we did to the left. Um, and as I said, he felt much happier with his results and much more confident. So, what's the main take home conclusion? Well, I think it's very clear that hair matters. You know, there are a lot of famous figures that are quite literally known for their hair. Hair can make a big difference to self-expression. Um, it is very malleable, and it's, there's so many different ways of styling your hair that it's very valued in society. The other thing I wanted to highlight is how hair transplants are an option. Um, in the growing field of hair transplant surgery, which is now worth about $5 billion every year, hair transplants work. Not only does hair transplant surgery restore your hair, but you know it can restore your mental health um, if hair loss has been something that has been affecting it. Once again, I'm Dr. Parisis. Thank you so much for watching. If you're concerned about your hair loss and you're considering hair transplant surgery, don't hesitate to visit fellermedical.com. I'll put the link in the description. And there you can submit an inquiry. Dr. Bloxham will get back to you. If you're based in the UK or Europe and you'd like to have a consultation with myself, someone who has a lot of experience in the industry, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can either reach out to me on my email down below or you can use the inquiry page of Feller and Bloxham Medical. Mention Dr. Priestess there.